We turn today to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 17. We have seen concerning the men of faith described in the previous verses, how they, without receiving the promises, verse 13, died in faith, but they saw the promises, welcomed them from a distance, and uh, as it were, ran to meet them and embrace them. Now, verse 17 we read, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. It was he to whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise men even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type, or figuratively speaking, he received him back as it were, from the dead. Now, when it comes to giving up things that are obviously evil, or things that are outside God's will, things that are a hindrance, things that are worldly, we can understand that the Bible is very clear. We are to be separated from all that is of the world. We saw that last week. This is the characteristic of the man of faith that he does separate himself from all that is unclean, comes out from among them, and being separate is received by the Father, he becomes a son of the Almighty God. But here is a step further, which many Christians do not understand. And they do not understand this because they have not taken the first step. That's something like saying, a child cannot understand what is taught in standard two if he cannot get past standard one. And so if we don't get past, first of all, being separated from what is worldly, we cannot understand Abraham's faith in offering up Isaac. Now, before Abraham received Isaac, he had a son called Ishmael. That was the product of his own strength. And that is a symbol of the flesh, as much as Isaac is a symbol of that which is produced in the power of the Spirit. Ishmael is the product of the fruit of the flesh. Now, God asked Abraham in Genesis 21 to send away Ishmael. And Abraham obeyed. He sent away Ishmael. That is symbolic of our giving up that which is fleshly. We give it up because that is not acceptable to God and we can understand it. But in the next chapter, Genesis 22, we read that God asked Abraham to give up Isaac too. And it is here where many Christians do not obey, do not understand, do not realize that God asks them to give up even the very gifts that he himself has given them. Ishmael was not God's gift to Abraham. It was the product of his own strength. God said, send him away. But Isaac, on the other hand, was completely different. He was the direct result of God empowering Abraham supernaturally. And if there was any child about whom it could have been said by any set of parents, this is God's direct gift to us, it was Isaac. Because the parents themselves were incapable of producing a child. But the power that conquers death had worked in Abraham's body and Sarah's body, overcome the deadness of their body as it were, and given them the ability, the life, to produce a child. And they got Isaac, God's gift. And now God asks them to give up even that. And there we see Abraham's greatness. God was testing him. And he gave up his son. If he had not given up his son, he could have said, this is God's gift, I don't have to give him up. And he would have missed out on God's highest for his life. When God gives us a gift, there is always the danger of our getting attached to the gift rather than to the giver. This is the lesson here. Abraham was in all likelihood getting attached to Isaac rather than to God himself. And when God saw that, God wanted to detach Isaac from Abraham. And so he said, offer him up. And therein, God brought Abraham back to the place where the giver, God himself, was greater and bigger in Abraham's eyes than the gift, Isaac. Now, whenever God gives us a gift, 
there's always this present danger of our getting taken up with the gift rather than the giver. It may be a gift of material things or it may be a gift of healing when we were sick and we can be taken up with the health God has given us instead of being taken up with God himself for whom we are to use that health. Or it may be something more spiritual like a gift of the Spirit. There are many throughout the world today who claim to have the gifts of the Spirit and many of them are genuine gifts of the Spirit. There is the outpouring of the Spirit upon many people throughout the world today, and people are getting many of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But they need to do what Abraham did with those gifts. What did Abraham do with Isaac? Lay him on the altar. We need to take those gifts of the Spirit, not get attached to them, not think that they are our possession, but lay them on the altar and say, Lord, they are yours. You can use them as you like. And with many people, this is what God has to do, to detach them from their gifts, so that their heart is taken up with the giver, he tells them, lay your gift on the altar. He doesn't do it himself, but he asks us to do it. God didn't slay Isaac. He could have done that. No, he asked Abraham to slay Isaac. And God can take away our gifts, but he doesn't do that. He says, you lay it on the altar. And it's at that point that many people say no. Where Abraham said yes, they say no. Their faith does not go up beyond that point. And therefore, they stagnate spiritually. And the gifts exalt them and they miss out and many fall away from the grace of God and lose out completely like King Saul and Lucifer, many others that we read of in scripture. But Abraham, he gave up what God had given him. And even though God's promise was bound up with Isaac, he considered that God is able to raise men even from the dead. For after all, in his own body, he had experienced a resurrection, power in his own body. So, God was certainly able to raise up Isaac from the dead. He didn't give up faith in God's promise. He didn't feel that, well, God has perhaps changed his mind now and perhaps it's not through Isaac that God is going to fulfill his purpose. No, he didn't have any such idea. He was absolutely sure that it was through Isaac that the promise would be fulfilled. But he gave up Isaac believing that the promise would still be fulfilled. It was not in a fatalistic attitude that, God, that Abraham gave up Isaac to God. It was not with grumbling and complaining. It was not saying, oh, well, God's so hard. If he wants it, I'll give it. No such thing. He gave up Isaac in faith. It says in verse 17, it was not just an act of obedience. It was the obedience of faith again. By faith, Abraham offered up Isaac. Where was the faith involved in offering up Isaac? In the fact that he believed that God is able to raise Isaac from the dead and fulfill his promise. He was absolutely convinced that God is able to do what he had promised. And so when he offered up Isaac, he was absolutely sure that he was going to slay him. He didn't think that God would stop him before he put his knife into his own son. He didn't know that. He didn't know there was a ram caught in the bush behind him whom God wanted to offer up as a sacrifice instead of his son? No. He spoke in faith to his son saying when Isaac asked him where is the lamb? He said God will provide a lamb. And when his servants asked him we read in Genesis chapter 22 that when Abraham's servants asked him how and what he was going to do on top of the mountain to which he was going his answer in Genesis 22 was Verse 5, stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder, and we will both worship and return to you. Notice there he says, we will return to you. He was sure that Isaac would come back with him down the mountain, even though he was sure that Isaac would be slain as well. And there, in obedience to God, though his heart was torn, he obeyed, gave up Isaac, and as it were, received him back from the dead. And it was on that day, I believe, that Abraham saw the day of Christ, saw as it were in faith the day when the father would take his only begotten son up Calvary's hill and offer him up as a sacrifice. This is what Jesus spoke of. Thus it is that we too can walk in faith, believing in the God of resurrection.